Well, let's speak to the artist behind those cartoons. Khalid al Bay joins me now from New York. Khalid, good to have you on the Newsmakers. It's been an extraordinary few months in Sudan. It seems as if there are many within the Transitional Military Council who are not too keen on allowing the democratic process to flourish. Many call it a counter-revolution. With that in mind, what's your role as an artist right now as we're in this phase B of the revolution, if you like? Uh, I think the artist's role, not only right now, but always is to ask questions and uh, to criticize. Uh, so that's what I've been trying to do since the uh, beginning, not only from uh, the beginning of the, the, the protests in Sudan, but actually before that, uh, when I was in Sudan in, uh, in November. But actually for the last eight years with the, with the Arab Spring as well. So it's, um, for me, I'm trying to compare a lot and I'm trying to um, remind people and remind myself of the mistakes that, uh, that we the people have been through, in, whether in, uh, in Egypt or in Tunisia or in Syria or, in, mm -hmm. or, or happening right now in Yemen, and how can we avoid that uh, in Sudan with basically the same players in power. And when we look at your audience, because you've done a, a wide variety of cartoons over a number of years from the Kaepernick cartoon that went viral, Spike Lee had it on his t-shirt, to stuff on Kashmir and Palestine mm -hmm. and Sudan and so on, right? At the moment, Sudan is boiling. Yeah. People are out on the streets. I wonder, when you're putting something on the page, Who's your audience? Who's your first audience? And maybe then who's your second audience? Uh, my audience is the internet. I, I, I'm a social media based um, artist and cartoonist and, and um, I've never had a border. Actually, what I'm trying to do is break these borders. I'm trying to reach out to uh, everyone, whether in Sudan or outside Sudan, or whether in Palestine or outside Palestine, whether in Kashmir or outside Kashmir, trying to talk about the issues that at the end of the day, this is all about injustice and this is about us as people uniting together and, 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 and f fighting back uh, through peaceful means, through just understanding what the problem actually right. is. And with going on, with, what's, what's happening right now in Sudan, what I'm trying to do is highlight the situation, but I'm also trying to highlight um, the long forgotten history of Sudan and of, of the region because mostly what media does and what, what, what's been happening um, since as long as I remember is that, you know, if you mention to anyone that there's a coup in Sudan, there's protests, they'll say, yeah, okay, that's, that's what happens in Africa or, the, or that's what's right. happened in the Arab world. That's, that's the normal thing. So uh, chaos is the normal thing. And that's what I'm trying to say. No, it's not. And actually, even if it is, it happens because of certain issues that you should know about. Maybe you're part of it. Maybe your government is part of it. Right. So Khalid, beyond your political cartoons, I want to call up something that you wrote. It was an op-ed for Al Jazeera online, and a lot of people have shared it. I've seen it on my social feed and so on, with the title, No, It's Not Over for the Sudanese Revolution. You write that for years, Hemeti, who's the interim military boss, fought for al-Bashir in the conflict in Darfur, where his forces, part of the Janjaweed militia, committed countless war crimes. He was rewarded by being made of the head of the Rapid Support Forces before turning on his patron in April and helping to get him deposed. I was curious because I followed your work over the years. I wonder, with everything that's happened on the street now, and when you see the true face of Bashir's government and those around him, and now the pushback from the Transitional Military Council, have you now changed your mind on Darfur because you speak of the countless war crimes committed by Hemeti? Uh, change my mind on Darfur is as in what? Well, I was looking at your work. So, for example, your tweets from 2011, where you talk about Darfur mm. being a hoax. You have a tweet in 2016 where there's an article, uh, which is a New York Times article, where Amnesty International speaks to people on the ground, 56 residents of Jabal Marra, where they speak of poisonous smoke, which could be chemical weapons used by mm. Umar al-Bashir. And you ask if this is another US paid PR company, right? And, and you, know, you have a wide body of work, but you never quite criticize the government on its policies in Darfur. So I wonder now with the revolution, have you looked back and do you feel that you had a missed opportunity to criticize the government at the time when Darfur was happening? No, I always criticize the government. That's, that's actually the only thing I've done. I've only, always criticized Bashir since, 
uh, I could draw, you know, and that's what I've been trying to do. Where the, with the thing with Darfur, what I was trying to, uh, I think, highlight was that how it was, it was used internationally, just like it was, just like Syria was used now. So it's it's the same things, you know. It's people um, or governments actually use these um, these catastrophes that happen to people, whether it, whether it's in Darfur, or whether it's after that in in Nuba Mountains and so on. Uh, they use it for their own advantage, and you know, once George Clooney or someone like that comes in, and then it's it's uh, it's uh, it becomes uh, something of like a you know a pop culture thing, and everybody starts talking about it, just like what's happening now in 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 um, in Khartoum with the Blue for Sudan, uh, which we actually use because we need to use these kind of things. But what was happening with Darfur is that yes, you know, there was catastrophes happening, there was a lot of things happening. We were so far removed from it. And, and of course, you know, there's a there's a there's an article by Nisreen Al Malik for the Guardian. And it talks about Khartoum being the selfish city, and that's absolutely true because we we're so far removed from it, and Darfur was so long in the dark that we really had no idea what was going on. We didn't have idea of how big that catastrophe was, and you know, yes, of course, uh, we could have talked about it more. We could have we could have pushed for it more. But whether in criticizing the government, I think. It doesn't matter if you criticize the government uh, on their actions on Darfur or whether their actions in Khartoum, because they've been doing the same thing for longer. Now, because Khartoum is a public city, uh, uh, sorry, a selfish city, now we see it in, 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 in Khartoum. We see what the Janjaweed has been doing. And of course, yes, we, we go back and say, yeah, we should, have, we, should have we should have stood up more. We definitely mm -hmm. should have stood up more for our brothers and sisters in Darfur. Well, Khalid, I'm not, you're not a political analyst. You're a cartoonist and you're somebody who cares deeply about his country and the region. You speak about the Arab Spring. Tell me how this is going to turn out. You don't have a crystal ball, but you're, you're somebody who still has hope about what's going to, what you'd like to see for Sudan. How is this going to turn out? I have, hope, I have hope for resistance. I have hope that we, including myself, don't give up and don't fall back um, and just, you know, watch things get back to how they normally are. Um, we didn't want just a change of face. We didn't want just a change of Bashir. We wanted a change of regime. Uh, we, we wanted a change of regimes in the region. We wanted a change of regimes in Africa. We wanted a change of attitude, starting from ourselves as well. So what I'm trying to do is push myself and try to push other people as well not to give up, because that's the only thing that we have. We cannot fight governments, unfortunately. And being a political cartoonist, and especially coming from the Arab Spring, you realize after you know, all, these, um, all these events that happened in the past years that you, know, you might be losing all your fights. You're, you're fighting a losing battle, basically, because the international attention and international help are the same people that are actually supporting these dictatorships that you're fighting, just like the Janjaweed and just like Hemeti is supported by the EU and most of his vehicles are, are actually uh, by the EU. They're giving to him by the EU to, f to fight the, the, uh, or to halt the, um, the move of migrants in the region. So it's the same people that we're asking to, to support us are the same people that are supporting the people that they call dictators and they're, they're putting sanctions on Sudan because of. So I can't leave, I can't, I can't travel freely because of the visa restrictions, because Sudan is under a terrorist list, but at the same time you're supporting the government that supports these terrorists. So it's, it's, it's really, um, I think it's our, our job right now is to highlight that, and even to highlight that to people in the EU and to people mm -hmm. in America, saying that this is what's happening. And I come back to my first answer again, that to say that, you know, yes, we, you know, the region is a mess. This is what's happened. But it's, it's never, it was not always like this. And it, and it can change. But we need your help. It's, your government is part of this issue as well. Khalid El Bay, thanks for joining us on the Newsmakers.